Um, so our next speaker is Aaron Lekul. I hope I've said that correctly. Um, Aaron is a mixed farmer and sheep producer from Kumanduk. Um, Aaron and Annika, along with their business partners, Tim and Cheryl Freak, run a business, a mixed cropping and livestock operation. One of the most innovative aspects of their operation has been their use of EID in sheep, collecting data on wool traits and body weights at the level of the individual animal, and using this data to select replacement ewes. Today, Aaron will give us a local producer perspective on what it's been like adopting EID and individual animal management. So I hand over to Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah. So as yeah, as you heard, um, we run a mixed a mixed farm of sheep and cropping, um, located between Coomandook and Sherlock. So we've got fairly variable soils. Um, got some shallow limestone as well as some uh, non-weighting sands, and that so a mixed farm suits fairly well. Um, yeah, we run about three and a half thousand breeding merino ewes. Half of them will get mated to a white suffolk and uh, the better half uh, will get mated to a self-replacing, to, to a merinos. Um, just before I get into the EID stuff, um, there's yeah a lot of other stuff on a, on a farm that can make just as big an impact or sometimes bigger. Um, that's good not to um, shy away and get just caught up on the on the technology side of things. Sometimes the basics can actually make a bigger improvement in your business. Um, so just a couple of photos here. We've got a bit of electric fencing to try and utilise um, pastures better. And then the confinement feedlot, which allows us to uh, manage um, the paddocks better in the summertime. We can get all the sheep off of the off of the land and um, not let it blow away. And also allows our paddocks to get away before they um, get sheep on them for lambing in middle of June or early June. Early June. So that's just a couple of little little things that help us, and we can feed them to whatever energy requirements they need. And um, yeah, so that's been a been a big help in our business. Um, yeah, so why we choose to do EIDs? Um, pretty much just because we want to keep improving everything about our business. The flock management is easier, and you're not just selecting blind, um, which yeah is easy to do unless you track everything. You just can yeah cull out the, the better sheep as um, Nathan was saying earlier and hopefully increase profitability. Um, yeah, and as Nathan said before, what's not measured is um, yeah hard to improve on. And yeah, just up the top there, that's our stick reader that we use. Uh, EID ear tags that we use down the, down the bottom corner there. Um, so we'll start from the start, like how we start collecting data. So basically at marking time, uh, yeah, the night before we'll scan in the tags um, as a single or as a twin and then put it in the, in the, uh, in the right lamb. And so that gets what they're born as. And um, yeah, hopefully in the future we can start weighing them as we um, mark them, uh, which would be nice, but we're not quite there yet can weigh them at, at weaning now, so um, yeah, once we get that marking weight, we can um, yeah, track growth weights a little bit better. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, those merino lambs will then get shorn in, in January. And um, yeah, then go on to the next stage that they can get, um, get a data entry. So as a ewe hogget, they will, um, get uh, just a rough visual classing, um, just to weed out anything that doesn't look right. But then most of it's just done by using the technology. Um, so at shearing time, we'll use that wand, to scan the ear, take a little piece of fleece out and put in a bag and that gets sent away with the barcode on it and um, get the, the wool test on that. And then the, the, that ewe hogget will get um, weighed uh, couple of weeks after shearing, just let them recover a bit. And then once we get that data back, we've got a, a bit of a profile on that sheep, what it's cutting, its growth rates, what it's actually weighing now. Um, so then we can make an informed decision on 
which ones go into the um, Moreno mob and which ones just get mated by a white suffix to get prime lambs. So um, this is how some of the data comes back. Like this is just some of the wool stuff uh, mainly and the, the weight is there on that, on that individual sheet and over uh, there it will have um, what it's uh, born as and, and that as well. So we are reasonably, like, it takes a few years to get all the data in, in place and get it, so we're reasonably new at it, but we're, we're having a go. Um, so yeah, that's obviously one of our, our better ones. It's, it's ranking really well in the, in the uh, DP class and the MP. It's, yeah, a nice, nice shape, good fibre diameter, and um, yeah, that was a really high body weight as well, that one. So that's obviously one of the, one of the better ones. So that one um, went into the, into the Moreno mob. And so this is how we do it. Just put them through the auto drafter, select what you want to, your cutoff point, and um, they'll just get drafted right or left or straight ahead. Um, yeah, according to which mob they're, they're going in. And then at scanning time, we also scan that all the twins will get put in that they've, got, they've been scanned as a twin. So that'll go on their individual, individual um, data. And all the dryers will get also scanned. Like currently we're just trying to build numbers like just about everyone is. So we have been keeping dryers, giving them a, two or three chances, but our uh, dry will never get a second chance in a merino mob. So if she's dry, she'll go out and get um, mated to white suffolk next time, but she'll also have that cross against her name um, for, for the future. Yeah, and one other thing, at weaning time also, we go through them and get the dry. So if they've um, scanned in lamb and then they haven't carried their lamb through to weaning time, they'll also get kicked out and into the, into the um, Crossbred mob, the white Suffolk ram go over them. Um, and then basically the, the reason why is it was brought up before <laughs> pretty well. We just whacked this one together roughly the other night. Um, yeah, so we can kick out those, those bad performers um, in our mob and increase the profitability of, of it. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much a quick spill on on what we what we do without going into too much detail. Um, yeah, so any questions? Thank you, Aaron. Um, just a quick one for me before we hit, before we uh, hit the floor. Can you tell us what some of the challenges or some of the um, the easy wins that you've had from um, uh, in implementing EID? in your business has been? Yeah, so I guess there's always going to be challenges with technology, especially if you're not very technology minded. Um, yeah, where well, some people's really good at that, but um, yeah, it's always a lot of little technical issues, but you get past them and it's all about just learning how to, how to run those programs and, and do it better. And you, you probably are better off just letting the experts do the data um, stuff. Um, um, yeah, I guess some gains. Um, if you, if sheep ever get boxed up or anything, you just run them through the auto drafter and it's all problem solved straight away. So, and you can use that as a management tool. So when um, you need larger mobs uh, to graze paddocks to get better past utilization, you can just, um, yeah, run it. Up run them through the auto, box them all up and then run them through the auto drafter when you need them in separate mobs again, which is very good, um, yeah. Aaron, you said that you put uh, your twins in the system as lambda twin. When that comes to your indexing, do you just have a formula in the index that allows for that or do you class them as twins and single separately or how do you work that through? Uh, yeah, so we've only just started getting that uh, data in the system, so um, we need to let that go into over to the experts basically to, to work out, um, to give them a preference, yeah, so that they get an extra little tick against their individual um, ranking and um, yeah. So then in the, in the long run, they're born a twin, they've had twin for three years in a row, they're 
going to be our um, most profitable sheep probably um, with a good wool cut. So yeah, there's still a, a long way to go to, to um, get it all nailed. Um, but yeah, you just got to start by collecting that data, I guess, before you can actually get the opportunity to, to use it. Um, yeah, I get, yeah, I guess when it comes to your shearing and your classing your wool, did, did that take much to implement through the working of the shed? Uh, no, not too much. Uh, probably the main thing is you just got an extra labour unit in there. Um, so you just got a person focusing on scanning that tag, getting a piece of uh, wool, putting it in the bag and getting the barcode printed out. So it's just an extra, extra labour unit and yeah, you sort of got to be a little bit more switched on, I guess, if you're keeping up with shearers and to make sure that that sample is with that one. Um, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's nothing that can't be done. Like it's, um, yeah. You can work out a system for it, so yeah. Do you have any problems with the sheep losing their tags or the shearers deciding it's a good idea to cut half them out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're always going to have those problems that you had before EID tags, but um, yeah, it's only a small percentage and yeah, it's not, not the end of the world, I guess, but yeah, a lot of times, yeah, the majority of them stay in. Have you had to try different tags to find what works for you best, Aaron? Um, not really. We have used a couple of different tags, but yeah, we've been happy with, with both. Um, yeah, so they do the job as long as that chip stays um, on the head. So, yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate you taking the time out today to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. And, um, Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to um, show you what we do, um, yeah, on the farm, and yeah, we just want to keep improving the business, and um, yeah, and definitely after your speech, I'm even more excited about, um, yeah, about the future of the industry. Like, we do have a long way to go, but we there's a lot of exciting stuff on the way. So, yeah, thank you.